this will be very important. And as we go through some of these kitchens, I have some comments to make. You may like them or may not like them, but I, there's some things that you need to tell you about. I enjoy Lake Lake County history, and we're going to start off with a picture of Lake Lake County. And I don't know if any, how many of you know it or not, but the picture that we have there of Lake Lake County, up in the corner, there is a little niche out of Lake Lake County. Does anyone know the reason why that is? Springs. There was the, no, that little part up there that comes around. There, that's, this portion right up here is called Hawkins Lake. And the reason that that's there, there was a gentleman that lived in that part of the county when they were drawing it out that would be very hard to beat when he ran for office. He was related to the Harrisons, and of the Harrisons, there were seven boys and five girls. There was the Duncans he was related to. So one of the gentlemen that was going to help run, have to run against him helped them take that portion out and leave it in Camden County. Politics was played then just like they are now. So. <laughs> this here, this is a picture of Jesse Blue's cabin, and he built. He was one of the first people in Lake County, about 18 or 20, on the east side of the Gascony River. And in fact, on some of the older maps, there was a little discrepancy on which side of the river he lived on. I found one where they have it drawn out on the map, and it has blue springs on it. So the spring was on the side where his house was at, on the east side. This house, I don't know if, if Many of you know Melvin Hoffman, but this is the house that Melvin lives in. This house was part, or this was on part of the property that was a 1,400-acre land grant. Uh, one of the, this is the same Fulbright family that's in Springfield, Fulbright Springs. They, uh, <coughs> one of the interesting things on this, on the abstract for this place, and for reference point, it gives down at the Buffalo Wall. I thought that was kind of interesting too. Uh, one of the ladies, whenever they moved down there, one of the Fulbright women made the remark that she said that this was heaven for men and hounds and hell for women and oxen. <laughs> This is the Miles Vernon place. And when Miles Vernon came here in 1838, he took a bunch of Cherokee Indians through here too. Now there's a little discrepancy on where the Cherokee Trail went. He got this place north of Lebanon at that time. He built a house later on. There was three of the Vernons. Miles was the oldest. Thomas Vernon was out at the end of YY. And there was uh, Obadiah Vernon, which was the Dallas Vernon family, was over in the Blackfoot community. In this house, we live, our place is on the north side of this, and up in the top part of this house, there was rings and steel pieces up there for shackling the slaves where they wouldn't run off at night. At the foot of the hill, I got a book from the library, and the name of it is uh, Buck Ripper. John Vernon wrote the book, but it is actually talking about the Miles Vernon place. But it's, there's quite a history to the Vernon place. Is that where the Vernon Cemetery is? Yes. Yeah. That, now there's, there's two Vernon Cemeteries. Three, actually. Two, this is the one up north. This is Miles Vernon. There's another one out Wawa Highway. Uh, uh, going out to uh, Tescumbia Road. Mm -hmm. And that's at the Thomas Vernon place. Uh, but the Miles Vernon place is one with Colonel Miles Vernon. Mm -hmm. What did you say the name of the book was? Buck Ripper. It's in the blue room up at the library. And there was at one time just one copy of it. I wound up with another copy of it. We had to do some change in the room to get it to print it out. But it is 
It is interesting. Well, the reason it's so interesting to me is out in our community, I suppose, but, but there was a lot of history. When in the 30s there were still little cabins, and 1930s there were still some little cabins north of that, or up the hollow, and it still had the balls and chains inside those cabins. This is Harrison's Hotel and Tavern that you see listed in Gleason's book or hear read about. His own. At that time, whenever this was there, that was built about 1855, it was uh, on Harrison and what was Mayfield, the corner of where that's at. They have changed that name from Harrison now, it is Green Street in Old Town. That burnt in about 1943. How long did it take them to build a place like that? I'm not sure. Uh, it, when you're reading about it, you have something like a, a two year period that you wind up at the house. This is uh, the old Union Brick Church in Old Town, and that was where different churches in Lebanon were formed. The Congregational Church, they met there. Christian Church, they met there and then they went their own way. There was a little bit of conflict. Uh, after they quit using this, they had the Lebanon Seminar, when you see it mentioned in some of your older books, but that was in that. The uh, Lodge met there before they moved up into Lebanon. It's on Wood Street, uh, about mm, right down past where the Methodist Church on the right hand side uh, on Wood Street. And then you had the old academy was at the end of St. Louis Street. If you were in Old Town, go all the way to the end of Wood Street, and if you look from there over towards where L.D. Dampier's place is, but right at the end of Wood Street, on the left, is where this house sat. And that is actually the way that the road used to run out of Lebanon to go on towards Rolla and that. In about 1865, they moved the road from that, from St. Louis Street, over to Main Street, and it goes out like we know it now, where that substation is. That's the E.B. Keller. Kelvin House, uh, over by the school. Owens family had it, but the Kelvins were related to the Owenses. That was on John Nance's property? Is that the one that was out there? It's on the left, yeah. Yeah, okay. They bought that property, uh, Kelvin's from Wickersham's. Of course, there's the old jail. It was built in 1871, and the bricks from it were made with, from the Lingsweiler brick place in Lebanon. The Congregational Church was actually built in Old Town, and it was moved up Michigan to where it is now. The sanctuary is still the same sanctuary that was in Old Town. The bell tower was put on after it was up there. The bell was cast in 1876. Now, if you want to think about that a little bit, Custer was fighting the Indians at that time. This was on Harwood. It was Doc McCombs' house. <coughs> this next house is the house of Sam Farabelle and was right along, it was the next house, past it on Harwood. And what you're talking about is you're getting close to right across from the church, where the Harwood Manor is now. And then you have this house there, and that was uh, Biffin Dapper House, or Greenleaf. Uh, but that, when Kay and I got married, that house was still standing, and they had, they were using it as apartments, and it had bees in the wall. I don't know at that time. But the house has a lot of history to it. Donnie, back up to uh, the Ferrara house for a second. 
Do what? Well, Dean Whipple scabbed some of the, the parts of those pillars and put them on. <coughs> But I don't see anything on, on either one of those two that looks like it. Now there is some doors and stuff that well, was in uh, off the top of the Daryl Deputy's house out there and his daughter's house and Dean Whipple. That's the, what you're talking about, so the doors in Dean Whipple, because that's where uh, Deputy's daughter lives in that house. But that's that was out of that. Which one of these houses was it? Was one of these two? This one right here. Okay, thank you. It'll be this one. And see, whenever Greenleaf and them, they were instrumental in the, the first banking stuff really that took place in Lebanon. This is a Keck school that's over on, was over on Rafe Road. That was built actually for the overflow from the old academy and the academy was getting old so they built this rural school over here and that was one of the first schools that was consolidated back into Lebanon whenever they built the school uptown. Whenever they built this in 1871. And this is, when you look at that picture, a lot of the pictures you see of that school, what we call it the Adams Building, if you look up on the very top of it, the top on that was built with all the decoration and stuff on it. They took that top off and put it as a regular top on because they were having problems with it. But when you get to the pictures of the old courthouse in Lebanon, the top on this building here will match kind of what the old courthouse was at Burnham. This house was on the corner of Washington and 2nd Street where that little agriculture building is now, but that's where this, this was a, a John Diffendaffer's house. And since I put this on there, I've got a lot better picture of that. But the courthouse was right behind that on the, on the left hand side, about the edge of it, you can see the old courthouse. Now, when I was telling you about the top on that, see what see what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And it uh, on February the 29th in 1920 it was built in 1894. 94. Now this is Commercial Street in Lebanon by the old Joe Knight building. And the second building up there, the taller building, was where the lodge met, and that was Garrison's Hall. When the courthouse burnt, they met in there for a while in that building. Also the First Baptist Church burnt in 1922, and they used that building for a while. And the reason I'm not using the pointer, it won't show off on that. <laughs> This is a Christian church, and it was at the corner of Commercial and Washington. And the organ out of that church is in the Christian church today. It's a pipe organ. Sean and I, my son and I, done some electrical work for them and that they whenever they done away with that they moved that pipe and we're up there and it's still there. So is that looking down worship? Yes. And you see the arc light out there in, at the top of that that's part of Lebanon's lighting system. There was like ten of those in town. This was a Lillard family, 1870, and the building on the right there, the second building on the right, is Ivy and Ruby 
And they moved up from Old Town. That's where the old state bank was in Lebanon. That's looking east. We're figuring the railroad tracks are on the east and west for all practical purposes. Now, this is looking west on Commercial Street. And Spiller and Roberts livery stable. If you were right to the very right of that picture, to give you an idea of where you're at, would be the post office now. Mm -hmm. And on the left hand side, if you look up through there, you see a little bitty building. Now that's Lebanon's bandstand, and that was pre-19 and 10. As we go, and a big tall building there on the right hand side would be the Sam Fair building. Now is that where Clark's? Clark's is just on this side. Clark's is the building with this. Right there. Oh, okay. So that one on the other side is where the bank is now, isn't it? Yeah. Sand fair building. We'll get, I'll show you that here in a minute, and we'll do a little talking about that. Now, you see where it says books there? Mm -hmm. On the right, that was Sam Fair's building, but he had, there was a Dr. Matthews in Old Town, and he moved up as the town moved, he moved up here, and he sold to Sam Fair. And in 18, uh, 18 and 84, they moved that little building out in the middle of the street on Jefferson where they could build the brick building. And they operated with it in the middle of the street. So that wall there said there's now there's two of those, two of those. That one, and then there'll be another one that's all out the street from it. Now we also watered the horses and we drank water out of that. That was Lebanon's water system. So that's on Jefferson and Commercial. No, it's on Commercial. Yeah, but this is, is right close to Jefferson and Commercial. In the 70s, when I was, I worked for the telephone company, and one day there was a big ruckus uptown, and one of those, Randy, you may remember that. You remember when that thing fell, one of those fell in, they forgot what about the darn thing being there, and they had it paved over, and it fell in in the middle of the street. Now this is the Attaway Hotel, and that would sit there just before you cross the railroad tracks on Jefferson, going towards the MFA, and it burnt in 1883. Same place where the newspaper is? No, the across the street, across the street. Across the street. And then after it was there, the Leckley Hotel was there. But the Attaway it was, was there, and it actually faced the railroad tracks. But it burnt in 83, in 1883, they had a large spark, and it burnt all the way up to Bennett Cook's blacksmith shop. And to give you an idea of where Bennett Cook's blacksmith shop was, across from the post office, where those little office buildings are in there now, Bennett Cook's blacksmith shop sat on that very corner, um, where Judge Moore's office and all of those are, mm -hmm. but it burnt all the way up there. One of the things, that I don't know that this is the case there, but at different times we've had fires in Lebanon and some of them are pretty good. But what you run into, a lot of those buildings had wooden shingles on top of them. And you had trains going through. Yeah. And the parks and cinders out of those trains would catch a darn roof on the fire. We were in a place in Colorado riding a train and they had a little deal out there that this town that Burke Kay and I spent the night had burnt six times and it had burnt from the railroad <laughs> catching on it. those on fire. Now there is the Lake Hotel. It was built later. And you see the arc light, that's Lebanon's lighting system. I could have thought maybe they might have fed the horse a little more too. <laughs> but, this 
This is the St. Louis Street, the St. Louis store. Uh, later would be where Burley's is at. Was that the Lebanon? Burley's? Burley's clothing store? Now, this was a post office on Commercial Street. The post office before I actually found the home. This is something I'll talk about a little bit here. It was located like it, three or four different places in town. One of them was over on Jefferson. It, this is on the east side of the uh, Commercial Street, about the middle of the way. And you went in the front door, they delivered the mail by train on the back door, see? And then you could go pick up your mail. At three at different times, there was, they had another post office that was right across from there on Commercial Street, then this one, then one down on Jefferson, and then they're up where we know it now that they built a new post office up there in 1932. Lebanon has had registered with the postal system three different names for their post office. One of them was Cherryville in 1847. It was Wyatt in 1848. And in 1849, it was Lebanon. The first post office, to give you an idea of where it was at, if you went out of town through Old Town, you know where the substation is in Gen that Geno's recycling? Out there on the right hand side, Alex Cherry owned that place. That's where you come up the Cherry Hill. But there was probably about four or five years ago, there was a building tore down out behind there, wooden pegs and stuff, but that would have been the Cherryville Post Office. And that was actually in Camden County. Lebanon was formed out of three different counties, and Camden County came all the way up there to where that substation was. There was Wright County, Camden County, and Pulaski County that Lebanon uh, was formed out of. This building here is probably one of the oldest brick buildings on Commercial Street in Lebanon. The building is still there. It is on the, you know, where the old Joe Knight building is now. Straight across the street on Madison, that corner building is it. You see those windows down there at, at the ground level? My son and I were doing some work up there a few years ago. Those are completely underground now. That's how much it's raised. The building in the back of that is something that you see very little of. And it was called the Waterman Hotel. S-E-R-L, and he sold it out, and it was Millsap and McMillan later on. But that is supposedly the oldest brick building on Commercial Street in Lebanon. And, that's, and that, that building today is, what's the name of it? I'm not sure what is in that building now. The car hair salon is in it now. Is it? Yeah. And I think the rail is right next door. Right yeah, door. it is. Yeah. So that is like an airplane. Yeah, I think there's a apartment here. There is another picture of it, but they've actually got the McMillan Hillsat sign up there. There was the original Joe Knight building, and it burned 1943 on Valentine's Day which would be tomorrow. In that, there's different things that you see on that, but the first telephone office that was in Lebanon was located in the Joe Knight building up at the top in the, by Dr. Avery's office. And there is also a deal on there that you'll see it says uh, Ozark Pride Ice Cream. Elmer Perry in 1926 
built an ice cream parlor down by where Noble Hudson's is on Commercial Street. They made ice cream and sold ice cream there. And he was there for quite a few years. I see a stoplight there, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> so is that the wooden one before her, or is that after? What? After what? When it burned, when it was still made out of wood, and then Joe Knight comes back and makes everything. He says it'll never burn again because he put steel beams in there. Mm, this one. I guess it must have been made out of wood because it burned. Yeah, it burned. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it did. It looks like two buildings there. Is that, yeah, that, that where Triumph Awards is? Yeah. Some of that building on the left? Or is that just one great big building? I'm not yeah. sure. That. No, there's a, there was another building right there on the left of that. Okay. Uh, it's kind of attached to Joe Knight. Yep, it's attached to it. Yeah. A lot of doctor's offices in that building over the years. Yeah. Now here's a picture of the bandstand again. The one that we were looking at a while ago. That was pre-1910. Here's the, the new bandstand. Quite a bit bigger. And that over on the right hand side, that house is still standing over there on uh, the street as you go through there. This is commercial. And what they could do, they could move that thing around. You could, you could either have it, the bandstand part of it over towards the railroad tracks, because the railroad tracks runs right between there. The clamshell could be moved? Yeah. Oh. This is commercial, and if you look way back up to the left, right there about that telephone pole, looking up Commercial Street, that was the building before it was Knights and them. It actually belonged to Fulkerson and Joshins. And Joshins had they had a meat company, and uh, Fulkerson sold out and moved out to the country. And Joshins had quite a store there for quite a while in that building. Now here's their raffling off some tickets to the World's Fair in 1904. <laughs> this is behind the rail where it is right now. But this is on, on a new street where these horses and stuff are. Yeah, but it wasn't Pickering. No, it was not Pickering. Yeah. It was, I said the beginning yeah, yeah. of Palmer yeah, was Palmer. involved in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Caps was in with Palmer. Right, uh, right. Is that the turkeys? Right there. Real talk about the turkeys in just a minute. Yeah. 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 And see, they had moved from, when Palmer's moved down to there, they had been up the street on Commercial Street, even farther up by the Freilich, what they call the Freilich building. Okay, this is where the paper office is right now. Where the turkeys are. And the Lake Lead Hotel is directly there on your left. Sam Fair building is the one catty corner in front of us there. And this is the Ozark Trail. Now, this is before Route 66. And actually, to get out of Lebanon at that time, if you drove down through there, come in from the west, you went down to Washington, turned on Washington, and went down Harwood, and went down through Old Town, and out by L.D. Dampers was the, the getaway to get out of Lebanon. That was it. 
Now, I've got a little story to tell you here. You see where the Lyric Theater is located there? There are quite a few of you have been around Lebanon for a long time, haven't you? That's Clark's store there on the right. They had just sold out where that car sitting. They had just sold out to a family by the name of Booth. And the Lyric Theater was on the left. And they were, they, the guy that ran the Lyric Theater, his name was Fan. Um, anyway, he married Floyd Jones' sister. And before they started their theater, the, the movie would start, Floyd had gave him a horn, a fog horn. And 10 minutes before the thing started, he'd play this, blow this fog horn to let people know that the, the movie was getting ready to start. So, anyway, they moved that over into the Clark building in 1928. They put a pipe organ in over there, had seating for 500 people, and the thing caught on fire and burned. They bought, Lebanon had just bought a brand new Dodge truck, fire truck. They burnt the engine out on it trying to put the fire out. <laughs> so anyway, they moved back across the street into where the, where the, this is where the paper office is on the left hand side. So Mr. Fayon built a new theater over on the lot that had burned. And he sold it to a guy, sold the business to a guy by the name of Forrest Snyder from Illinois. And Forrest Snyder brought with him his nephew to sell popcorn. And his nephew was Vern Wilkerson. How many baked conies at Vern Wilkerson's? <laughs> Richard Park Glen first house, and that was on the corner of where uh, Mid Missouri Bank is now. But that was his first house in Lebanon. That's the funeral procession coming down Commercial Street from Bland in 1899. And you can see there on that part of that where it says uh, buggy shop, that you can still see the part of where that thing had burnt. This is the second part of the Richard Parks Bland funeral procession, looking up Commercial Street. And that was Richard Parks Bland's house. And it was located out by, off of Morton Road, what we know it now. And they called it Monticello the West. It, in that building, that house was still standing in probably uh, the latter part of the 60s. And then Willis Loring bought the property. Bass Trapper has it now, and that's where they were having boats up there over off of Morton Road. But that's where that house stood. And Bland owned like 810 acres or something. He owned all the Orchard Hills. The first Bland school, we think of Bland school us, that us people here now, we think of it out by where Walmart was at. The first Bland school was over on Vance Road, over behind Ed Morrison's Chevrolet, where the substation is. And it was there till 1905. But that was the Bland School, after Richard Parks Bland. Donnie, from, from Loring's house, where did the Bland house sit? Back down towards the road, towards Morton Road. Left or right? No, pretty well up from where his house was at. That was pretty well going to the house. Lebanon's Charlie. 
<laughs> so that was, went to the Gasconade Hotel. They built that Gasconade in 18 and 90. The little trolley came there to the corner of where Commercial Street is, made a left and went right up Commercial, went over to Van Buren Street and made a right and went to the Gasconade Hotel. Now, about halfway up where Wendy uh, Reese has her print shop, they had a little place where they parked the little go buggy in there in the evening. And right down at the Leckley Hotel, there was that thing, the trains were running through about every two hours. So the guy that was running the trolley kind of got bored of waiting every two hours. So he attended Hannigan Saloon in the Leckley Hotel and <laughs> took it up to park it one night and took it about up to where Wendy's was at, run it out through the back of the building. <laughs> now, did that trolley go to Sudan? If I have not been able to find that, I had my son even check it. He works with the state because I got interested when I heard you talking about that. But it would have been nice if it had, if a person could have gotten a hold of it. Yeah, that's where they, the fairgrounds said they got. Now, do they still have? They don't know where it's at, but the state fair. Fairgrounds. That's the state fair. The state fair. And one of the guys that Lynn talked to works at the state fair. They knew nothing about it. Yeah. Said, uh, the guy I talked to said, oh, we, we have a trial out here. And it's, we heard it was yours. And I, I said, The you know picture, what I even got a, a book that Glenn has on the progress of the state fair. Yeah. And the trolley that is in that is yeah, it's, not. It's not the same trolley. And it's not the same trolley. Yeah. I was hoping that it would be. He brought me a whole book of that. Well, we'll take that one too. Yeah. <laughs> And this is an electric trolley, yep. too. It's electric. Mm. And the old reliable lumber yard, that's where the MFA is now. You see the old binder, see this part you're looking at is where the paper office, that lot that you're looking across is where the paper office is now. And Freeman Dolan told me that when he was a kid, he used to cut across that and run across to go across the street. They also hold, held a street fair before they built the building up there, the Lingswaller building, uh, they had street fairs and they had their cattle and stuff. They had lots of stuff out there in that, where that's happening. A lot of them out there and had their shows uptown. That's the Gasconade Hotel. I don't know if you've seen this or not. This is the back of the Gasconade Hotel when they were building it. Where was it? Gasconade Park. Gasconade Park. 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 Mm -hmm. Can you believe Lebanon had stuff like this? They had a... Yeah. Look at that smell. Billiard room. It, it was room. something else. Really was. Well, was the mineral well close to that, or did they just bring the water over to the hotel? Didn't they build it for that, basically the mineral Yeah, water? right. Mm -hmm. was, got, would this have been like from the view of the Hughes Center, mm -hmm. the back side? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just a little different view. I was up at the license bureau one day, waiting my turn, and I went through some papers that I found there, and there was one from called Missouri Resources. And there was, I'll show you here in just a minute. From this, there, there was a place in Lebanon called the Yoakum Hotel. I looked for that darn thing. One of my favorite hobbies, besides the history, is finding out where these places were actually at in Lebanon. I couldn't find the Oakham Hotel. I looked and looked, had information. And while I was there at the License Bureau, if you will look off to the right, you see that banister going out through there? You see that building down there, mm -hmm. down low? Sure. That's the Oakham Hotel. Mm -hmm. The Oakham Hotel was at the corner of 4th and Jackson, and I found at the courthouse a couple lights and locks that Mrs. Oakham had. It was kind of an overflow for the people that couldn't afford to go to the Gasconade, people <laughs> could go to the Oakham. 
is the foundations that you see out there in the park now, is that part of the hotel? Oh my God. Oh, I always thought it was. Yeah, right. I always thought it was. No. Oh. No. The swimming pool was out there. Right. Yes, I did hear about that. Yeah. The hotel kind of set back to the north. The, there was a circle out there that they took that thing around. And You'll see the circle on the map. See that right there on the right, you see that little circle that out there past those poles? That thing actually circled and went out and went up underneath that front part there. But the thing that I can remember, when we lost the Gasconade Hotel, we got telephone service in Lebanon that year, 1899. That's the way I kind of remember that. But that, that is, the, as far as I know, that is the only, and I stumbled onto that strictly by accident. I, they had some pictures there showing a standpipe, and I had my grandson to get a hold of the Department of Natural Resources and see if they had any more pictures of Lebanon, and they did. They sent me an envelope of them. And in that was when they sent me the one, and I, Sean and I, excuse me, we went down to the, we have a deal at home that told where, exactly where the gas grenade set. We went down, people probably thought we were crazy. We were measuring off to see where it was at. But 4th and Jackson is actually where the Oakland Hotel. That was what I was interested in. Are there ever any inside pictures of the gas grenade? Yes. Now, I don't know if we'll get to see them this but I do have some pictures of it. We'll see how far we make it. <laughs> How many yeah. rooms did it have? It looks so, so huge. What? How many rooms did it have? I'm not sure. I've got that at home. It, it had a billiard room. It had a boiler room to set away from it. It had shingle wood, too, and that wasn't a good thing. Didn't it actually house 500 people? I, I think that's the room. See, that hotel, we wouldn't have lost and it, it, See, it kind of... There you go. Fell apart later on before, before they had the fire, and they were going to change it into a college or something. This apple house. There was a little story that I want to tell you about that too. The Nelsons were into the apple business about the eight, uh, part eighteen and eighties, and that this building here, the first when it was first in use, it was a wool house. And I'll tell you where that building set. You know where La Lazy Lee's is now? Yeah. That's where this building set. <laughs> they made wooden barrels there. <laughs> and they, the reason they made the wooden barrels, that's what they shipped the apples in. And out at the race, something that, I don't know if you know this, but out where the racetrack is now, there was a, that was called a spur orchard. Belonged to a Dr. Carroll. And he sold apples through this outfit. But they built a spur off of the railroad to go up into there to where they could load. There was a thousand acres of apples, of apple trees. And that, they called that the Orchard Spur. And Kay's uncle and aunt used to own that property before Willard's had it. And at that time when they had it, there were still a few of the old apple trees that were out there in that field. But uh, one of the deals I read the other day, now I'm not, I don't take me as gospel on this, but this is what it said in the book, that out of this building here, they could make as much as a thousand barrels in a day. Now these are not barrels that would hold water, but they put apples in them, and then they put a head on it, they put the fancy apples on top of them, mm -hmm. and shipped them out. And Lebanon, or Lebanon County, was known as the land of the big red apple. Uh, it was also called the Crestview Farm. Up where, out where they, they had the apple orchard. There's another view up. They also shipped poultry and stuff in those barrels. Yeah. I don't know. I guess you'd have to do that in the winter because uh, you'd be getting more foul than what you wanted. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah. But, but that's where that building was located. Lebanon had a bunch of tomato canning factories. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was 18 of them that I have found so far, located around through the county. And that was, you know, this one was down where, you know where the old skating rink was, right mm -hmm. across from Lazy Leaf? Yeah. That was the tomato canning factory. That's neat. Belonged to the Riggs family. Perfection Packing Company. Now, I have a uh, token from that book. That was good for one, one barrel of tomatoes or whatever that they could take and sell it. I actually found that on John Stowe's farm down there. So, that's the only one I've ever found, but it, it said Perfection Candy Company on it. So. Oh, This house belonged to the McCasin family. And you know where the car wash is now? By O'Reilly's? Mm -hmm. That house stood there. Then after it was torn down, Leckley Electric had their office there. Mm -hmm. But that's what, now, what gets confusing sometimes when you see them in some of the books, the picture books, the next house I show you, take a good look at this one. That's at the end of Madison, the Lowell House, Carmichael's. Mm -hmm. And then when you see the pictures of those things, you one had to be built right off of the other of the deal. Mm -hmm. This was in Sam Ferris Drug Store, or Central Bank, or Community Bank, yes now. Now, now, if you face the building, Sam Ferris Drug Store was on the right. On the left was Demoth's Grocery Store. And they sold Queensware, but you'll see some of the uh, china and stuff there. But that was Demoth. And I always thought it was Demuth. But I got corrected on that by one of the old gentlemen in town told me said that the name was Demoth. <laughs> so. <laughs> The person that helped me on a lot of stuff, I'd call it, my mother graduated from Lebanon in 1933, and there was a James Colby. James talked to me quite often. He graduated from high school with mom. And I got to thinking, you know, maybe I'm making a mistake and making a nuisance out of myself by calling him different times because he was a wealth of information. So I kind of quit calling for a while. I got a phone call one night. Said, is there something wrong? Why aren't you calling? <laughs> so I decided it was open game. Yeah. But he was he was a nice gentleman. He's the one that also told me the story about Vern Wilkerson and he was a pallbearer for Vern Wilkerson. So you know I, I kind of wondered, you know, what he was telling me, but him and Vern were good friends. This store here was Wood Store, and it actually where the drive-in is at the uh, community bank now, that store was there about where that was at. Randy, you can probably remember when Jefferson looked like that. Changed a little bit as we do now. And I'll bring up something that's not, that kind of goes along with this. Being that, you know, they tore those buildings down on Jefferson there, the Regan building and uh, the drugstore. But before that drugstore was there, there was a creamery there that belonged to Moore's. And before Moore's was there, there was a place, if, if you ever get a hold of the book, Through the Eyes of Jess Easley, and they talk about the Clifton House. The Clifton House was actually on that corner. It was a hotel. But the hotel, yeah, the Clifton House was the first thing that, that I know of that was there. And the second thing was Moore's, which I have 
pictures of those at home. Uh, I don't have them in Cl Clifton, but I do a board of screen reading. What's that exactly? Um, what road is that commercial? That's Jefferson. Jefferson. Look yeah. north on Jefferson? Yeah. A bank would be right about back this way. That, that's the street that went through there. There was a street that went behind where the bank was at and they closed it off. New Street. So when they widened Jefferson, did they have to take some of the buildings down or was there nothing? No. Yeah. They, I'm sure they got off close to this. I can remember when they widened it. Do you remember it, Randy? Several of them were gone yeah. already. I know they didn't acquire any right away in the south. I'm not sure that they did in the north. That's why those lanes are so narrow. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a bird's eye view of Lebanon, and this was taken from the top of the old courthouse before I'm on. That house on the left there is Homer Crows. If you look straight across the top of that, you're going back towards the MFA. And the one on the right gets you back up on Commercial Street. Uh, but that's what it looked like from the courthouse. Is that Crow House on Washington? Yeah, what? Is that Crow House on Washington? No. Um, would have been on Adams. They had that house at one time. Struck that, behind. That's John Crow's. Washington. This is home. Okay. Yeah. That John Crow's, the house still stands on Washington. John Walter's dad. Mm, brother, wasn't he? I thought home. Homer was uh, Walter's dad. Yeah. That's what I thought. But John and John and Homer, I think, were brothers. Yeah. There's the Lingswaller house. Where was that? Palmer Funeral Home used to be in that. Oh. Now it is uh, yeah. Milton. Landmark. Landmark building. Mm -hmm. That's right. A carpenter by the name of Frank was the one that built that house. There is the back side. You know when MFA burnt just, I don't know, two or three years ago? That's the portion of it that you're looking at right there at Belfort Park. Now, you've got the old State Bank and the Bank of Lebanon, where it says bank up on top there. Later, it was State Savings Bank, Central Bank, now it's Community Bank across the street and down the road. This was inside of the Lebanon Bank, kind of what it looked like on the... 19 and 9. <laughs> That's the county clerk's office. Walking shop. And he's the one that's seated. Okay, the next one is w inside of W.I. Wallace's office. And that clock that there in the back of that is in the Congregational Church. It don't work. It's there. See, Mrs. Wallace went to the Congregational Church. But that's how that's out of his office. Where was that at, Donnie? Where was his office at? Okay, just a minute here. Well, it's going to be in this picture right here. You see where the state bank? Yep, yeah, Wallace's office was right here. And the old state bank was right up there. The Lebanon bank was right over here. That's the hotel up there. Called the Ozark at one time, Harris's Hotel at one time.
This is where Glen York Station was at. Hart Miller. That was Colby's grandparents on Jefferson Street. And later, at one time, it was the Nazarene Church. First millionaire in Lake Lee County. First millionaire? Yeah. yeah. A lawyer. Lawyer? Oh, okay. Then he got That's into funny. politics. <laughs> but he was Lebanon's first millionaire. Uh. That's Watson's grocery store. That's about the middle of the block from up from Joe Nye's. And that was in 19 and 20. Burley store, and that was about 19 and 26. I don't know, I can't tell, but the old historical society used to put displays in the windows of town and people could walk by and look at them too. I don't know if it was around Christmas time or a certain time of the year, but they would use them store windows for, for displaying historical items. Burley's was on, this, on Adams and Commercial, right? No. Where the high bids? The high bids? Yeah. This is the building, the post office, since 1932. Yeah. And directly across from where this was built was Bennett Cook's Blacksmith Shop. That's on the, on the corner where they've got that mural of the butterfly room. No, 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 that's down. 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 down there. Straight across from the post office. Or <coughs> Moore's office and, mm -hmm. and those in there by the old factory building. Of course, I wonder what these places are. Bennett Cook had a child that was handicapped. He also had a, a, a blacksmith's shop in, in Old Town. And then he moved up on the commercial when the city moved up there. He also gave, donated the first acre of land. Now it wasn't the first school, but he had donated the first district school in the Cook neighborhood where the Cook School was at. Oh, did you hear that, Ryan? Hey, what? The Cook School. Cook School didn't read? I think you left. I think he's left. He's left. He's left. <laughs> yeah, he's got the sign of the cook school sitting in his office right now, so it's very neat. Uh, cool. And the first, the first school that was in that neighborhood was by a man by the name of Belvedere. Francis Belvedere started a subscription school out in the Cook neighborhood before they, about 18 and 70. And then the Cook School come along about 18 and 80. This was built after Bennett Cook's blacksmith shop left out of there. This, the postmaster built this across the street from the post office. That stood there where those buildings were at. That corner's burned off more than any corner in the left. One guy on the farm, top, farm department one, say one day, he said, He'd either fought five or six fires there at that corner lot. He said he did, hoped he was off there before it burned again. <laughs> and they run the bus lines out of that thing there for a while, too. Here's a Ford dealership there. Do you know when it burnt the last time? Uh, Scarborough's. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, Scarborough's. Yep. I'm not sure what year, but the Scarborough's was the one that was in there when it burnt. 60s. Late 80s. Oh. And before that. Can, can you count who ran the best line? Brian Bart's one in the 80s. Uh, yeah. It was an old Quinn that ran it to Fort Leonard Wood for a while. Ray? It wasn't Ray or Quinn? 
I'm not sure what his first name was, but it was an O'Quinn that ran that bus line. And, but it was, and then they got to use it for, you know, other places. But the main thing was going to Fort Leonard. They had the first school bus out. Uh, is that, was that when, I was, bus lines when I was a kid, that thing burned. Well, the first store that I remember being on that lot was Brooks. Uh, there was a Kroger's. Kroger's was there in the 50s. Mm. Because it, I remember when I was a kid, mom and them would go in there and they'd buy coffee and they had a little machine that you could grind your own coffee in, you know. But it was a Ford dealership there. And <coughs> see there, there's a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And see, you can see the building in the back, rice sticks in the back. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that was in the 40s. Now, this is another little story. This church was moved off of Bland Street in Lebanon. And that's an M.E. South. And it's where the uh, Realty Executives is now. There was two Methodist churches in Lebanon. There was the North and the South. I always took it when they said North and South. One was farther North and the other was the South. That's not necessarily the case. The first group met at La Murphy's place before they had a church building. But they weren't for the South. The two churches never joined until 1941. But they, people went and they, there was a division. You know, I mean, even in their book, and I'm not just saying this making it up. They have their own book from the Methodist Church, and I have a copy of it where it tells what took place. But they did not get the two to join until 1941. <coughs> but they moved this church building. It was standing over on Bland, uh, on Bland Street, and then they moved it up on Commercial, and then later on it was used as a lodge up on Commercial. Uh, after they were in the Sam Fair building, the lodge was, when they moved from Old Town, they were up in the Sam Fair building, and then when that building got in bad repair, they moved into this building, which was on Commercial Street. And that building on the right there, the one, the taller one is the Greenleaf. Block, what they call the Greenleaf Block. Of course, the other one down is where the paper office is at. This uh, was about at the end of World War One. Sterling Brothers, they were located in the bottom of the Leckleed Hotel. And those, the Sterling family was related to Lynn Stone. This is a picture at the corner of Monroe and Commercial looking east in about 1903 to 1908. I'll quit here in a few minutes. Of course, this is the Magnetic Ice Company. Okay. This, do you know where Mylon Hart's Barbershop's at? That hills is located on that lot. And that was the first mill that was there that was moved up from Old Town. They moved the rollers out of a mill in Old Town and moved it up there. And somebody was throwing this picture away and Kurt wound up with it. It was in a, not a gold frame. When this thing burnt, now this would be, Jackson Street would be out here in front of it. This is the second mill they built back there in this place. Okay, Mark, 
Do what? Did they burn? Yep. Nearly every mill burned. Because you didn't have all the devices and stuff because you got plenty of dust around them and things were going to happen. This one was built, the first one was built in 1872 and burnt in 1893. This one was built in 1895 and was there till about the 400, or till about 1930. Now, right across the street from this mill, this is where Freeman Dolan's tar shop was at. And this hedges was using his head a little bit. He put him a mill down there while these people was waiting to get grain. He was selling them groceries across the street from them. <laughs> and that is 19, the picture there is about 19 and 6. And that building is still standing, incorporating some of that down there. This is the picture I was telling you about that I found out from Missouri Resources. Lebanon had a bathhouse. A people by the name of William English, him and his wife ran it. For Lebanon, it was a colored family. But they had a, a bathhouse there. And this is where I got all excited about. There used to be a drinking fountain that stood over to the right of that. There was kind of a little park. And that drinking fountain stood in front of the courthouse for quite a few years in front of the old jail. It disappeared. And I got to pursuing to see where it went. Because I stopped the day that they were tearing the jail down, and I asked where the drinking fountain was. Because, you know, when I was a kid, it stood up on uh, Commercial Street across from the Joe Knight. But later it got moved down there. And there's a picture on that book of Leclerc County. Sheriffs of Rutgerly County, there's a picture of that pot of that drinking fountain. Had ten cups people could drink out that day. But it disappeared, but it did come back, but the stem never came back. But part of it came back, or was found. I'll put it that way. But I got beside myself. I used to see stuff like that disappear. Where was the stem found? What? Where was the building? Okay. You know where the power plant is? Uh, Second Street? And Van Buren, oh, yeah, okay. right there, yeah. right there. That's Lebanon's first, where Lebanon's first well was at down there. Mm -hmm. And I went to an art exhibit one night and stuck my foot in my mouth. They were selling these pictures, and they had a picture there of the Lebanon's magnetic well, hand dug well. I said, you don't dig a thousand foot hand up well. <laughs> no. <laughs> so one of them went over to question to see whether I know what I was talking about. I'm not very bright, but I know that you don't know a thousand foot. <laughs> Pick and show. <laughs> <laughs> you just need a really long ladder and a long hand. How much longer do you want to go? You guys are right. It's 7 o'clock, 7 11. We're going to bring it back, right? Yeah, I think we do. We could we could take a break if you want to. Let's call it a night and can you come back. Whatever you folks want to do, I don't want to bore you with it. I know it's mm -hmm. it's not. You're talking about Jeff Seeger thing. Brian Morris said about this time fixing this World War One dog tanks, and we just never protecting in those camps. So once we get a museum going, he's going to donate them to the museum. But th this is. This is right where the water fountain thing. If you want to stop it there, we have, and here's the next, we can, that's a big good place to stop because there's some good pictures from sure. here on something that she was asking about. <laughs> but if you want to do it sometime, Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. But that's what we're going to do for this evening, and I hope that I haven't bored you too much. So.